Hello, and welcome to our occasional series of first-person stories read out by the authors themselves. The New Humanitarian aims to amplify the voices of refugees, asylum seekers, and people affected by conflict and disaster, placing them at the center of the conversations about the policies and events that shape their lives. Today's essay was written and read out by Matai Muan. He's a South Sudanese refugee, and although he's currently studying in the United Kingdom, this essay was recorded from his home country of South Sudan, where he's conducting research. In his essay, Matai shares how policies suppress the economic potential of refugees, which forces many into a situation of dependency, instead of allowing them to contribute to the societies they're currently living in. Let's refugees be economic contributors. My name is Matai Mo. Refugees are often depicted as economic burden on the communities where they are found services and on the international aid system. This often overlooks the fact that 55% of refugees live in countries where their rights to work and fully participate in society is restricted. This suppression of refugees' economic freedom and potentials forces many of us into a state of dependency turning the narrative of economic burden into self-fulfilling prophecy. For example, in Kenya, where I have lived as a refugee for the past eight years, people like me have historically had neither freedom of movement nor the right to work. Most of the more than half a million refugees in Kenya, mainly from Somalia and nearby South Sudan, Ethiopia, and Burundi, have been confined to two designated camps, Kakuma and Adab. They have had little choice but to defend on dwindling amounts of international aid and have been left with little hope for a better future. Those like me who have chosen to live outside the camps who struggle to obtain legal residency and often can only find work on the margins of the economy. But this does not have to be the case. In an important step forward, in February 2022, a new refugee law came into effect in Kenya that gives some refugees the right to work, to start businesses and have their professional qualification recognized. But more need to be done to fulfill its promise. My own experiences and my work with ABBA refugee entrepreneurs in Kenya's capital, Nairobi, have shown me that a different reality is possible. Many refugees are brimming with creative ideas, energy, and a desire to be active economic agents able to provide for themselves while contributing to our host country's economy, if only we are given the chance. Over the first eight years, I faced many difficulties as a refugee in Kenya. I was around 14 years old when I left my hometown of Pangak, South Sudan, in 2008. The school there had been damaged in fighting during the long war for South Sudanese independence. Many of the teachers had either left to search for places where they would have more opportunities or lost their motivation to continue teaching. I wanted to go somewhere where I would be safe and could get a good education. That desire led me to leave home at a young age, first to Uganda, where I lived for six years, and then in 2014 to Kenya. When I arrived in Kenya, I was told, like all refugees, that I had to reside in the camps. But I wanted to stay in Nairobi, where I hoped I would be able to continue my education. Staying in Nairobi, however, men being undocumented and regularly facing harassment from police officers who target and harass refugees for bribes. I soon found out that my hope of having better access to education in Nairobi was naive. As a refugee, especially an undocumented one, I didn't have access to public education. I saw that maybe if I registered with the UN Strategy Agency, the UNHCR, the process of enrolling in school would be easier. I submitted an application in 2015, but it took nearly five years for me to be granted refugee status. While I waited, I managed to find a private school that allowed me to complete the diploma course I needed to be able to attend university. But I also needed the documentation I didn't have. To enroll, I had to figure out how to apply for South Sudanese passport, even though South Sudan was still an independent country at the time I lived. All of these complications, I believe, were a deliberate way of trying to discourage refugees from coming to Kenya. And they were just a small sample of the barriers refugees face in day-to-day life. 
I eventually figured out how to navigate them and graduated from university. But when I paused to look around, there were almost no other refugees in the school or university I attended because the Kenyan system has made it exceedingly difficult for people like me to fully participate in society. The same type of obstacles that make it difficult for refugees to get an education in Kenya also prevent them from participating in the formal economy. But the fact that Kenya's laws and bureaucracy have historically excluded refugees from the labor market does not mean that refugees do not have economic potential. During a Young African Leaders Initiative, Fellowship in 2018, I was introduced to the concept of social entrepreneurship. I was inspired by the idea that refugees could take control of their own destiny by running businesses that earn the money while also allowing them to support other people in their communities. I soon co founded an organization called Tede Africa to train refugees on how to start and run businesses and on how to navigate the complicated legal and regulatory mess that makes it so difficult for refugees to participate in Kenya's economy. Through Tede, I've worked with South Sudanese youth and women in low income and Islam areas of Nairobi. I've been consistently impressed by their incredible resilience and passion to better themselves. Despite the hopes, these refugee entrepreneurs do everything from running restaurants to setting up mobile money transfer services. Their businesses serve Kenyan and refugee customers alike and provide economic benefit to the entire surrounding community. In recent years, Kenya has taken significant initial steps toward recognizing the economic potential of refugees like the ones I've worked with and to start reversing the cycle of dependency that perpetuates the false idea that refugees are an economic burden. The new refugee law allows refugees from the East African community, a regional intergovernmental organization consisting of Burundi, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Kenya, Rwanda, South Sudan, Tanzania, and Uganda, to give up their refugee status in exchange for resident rights as EAC citizens, which would allow them to work and live anywhere in the country. This is an incredibly positive step forward. But nearly a year later, the vast majority of refugees in Kenya, including Somalis, who are not part of the EAC and account for around 56% of all refugees in the country, continue to live in camps where their potential is stifled, while only 16% live in urban areas. To fulfill the promise of the new refugee law, the Kenyan government needs to make sure that changes made on paper are fully applied. This would be an important step towards showing other world leaders and their citizens, their refugees can flourish if given opportunities to help themselves and to contribute to their own societies. How in them can we write a new narrative that acknowledges refugees' true potential to be an active economic agent? This episode was written and read out by Matai Mwan. It was edited by Mulit Hujali and Eric Reedy, and it was produced by Marta Vanderwolf.